I'm a born hunter and outdoorsman with a relentless passion for nature. I told myself that if I ever had an opportunity to have my own outdoor show, I would show the things and people that we don't traditionally see, and that I would be an example for other outdoorsmen to follow. There's a whole different world out there when it comes to the outdoors, a world we seldom see. Welcome to the other side. Non-Typical Outdoorsman TV is made possible by Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation, the National Shooting Sports Foundation, and Martha Johnny Safaris. Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation is a nonprofit organization with the mission to use research-based communications and engagement programs to recruit the next generation of HATS, which stands for hunters, anglers, and target shooters, and communicate that HATS are the primary funders and stewards of land, fish, and wildlife conservation in America. Outdoor Stewarts and I collaborated on a series of hunting and shooting events for 2023 and in this episode you will see one of the events that we did to introduce more people from the hunting and outdoor industry to hunting. Okay so ladies and gentlemen today here we are at White Now Ranch we are doing a hog hunt. This is a hunt, a collaboration between non typical Outdoors on TV and Jim from Outdoor Stewarts and Conservation Foundation. Today we have guests from Texas Parks and Wildlife. We have Steve Hall, we have a few of his staff members, Emmanuel, Kenneth, Barbara, and Kevin. We also have people here from Met My Ranch. They will be also participating on the hunt. We have a few other people, Vince from Shady Oaks Gun Range, and we have Cheyenne from Primary Arms. In the back also, last but not least, we do have Ty. He's one of the ranch hands, and he'll be helping out today. So on today's uh, episode, y'all, we will be going out to hunt hogs here in Texas. Um, it's important for us to be safe today, so you will see a lot of safety aspects being um, being talked about. Uh, the purpose of us doing this is to help bring more diversity and new hunters, first time hunters out. So Jim, do you want to say anything about uh, what we're going to do today? Sure, so we are all here today because of a grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. And that money actually comes from hunters, anglers, and target shooters. Uh, to, to do some marketing, to promote diversity in the outdoors, to recruitment in the outdoors. So we're excited to have industry represented here with Shady Oaks and Primary Arms and the industry uh, and the agencies represented here by Texas Park and Wildlife and appreciate the invite from Why Not Red. So we're excited, we're gonna have a good time and get outdoors and have some fun. That's right, and hey, here's the thing I wanna highlight. We got four hunters today. Two of the hunters have never shot hogs. One of the four hunters is a brand new first time hunter that has never hunted anything. So we're gonna see how this hunt goes. Before hitting the woods, I did a quick interview with the hunters. We've known each other for a while, Vince. Yes, that's right. Pro probably what, seven, eight years maybe? Yep, yep. Something like that. I met Vince when I was running Black Wolf Hunting Club back in the day, and we did a hunt, a youth mentored hunt, down in Comanche, Texas at Lake Proctor. Uh, here you are now, Vince, participating in this hunt here, this hog hunt. Uh, what do you think about today's event? Well, what, what do you think about what's to come? It's, I'm always excited, you know, okay. whether it's fishing or hunting. I, I can't sleep the night before. I'm, I'm excited. I don't care how many times I've done it. Uh -huh. All I'm thinking about is the big fish or the big hog or the big deer I'm going to get. Okay. Well, I'm sure you're going to get something, but uh, you own Shady Oaks Gun Range. Correct. Tell America a little bit about Shady Oaks Gun Range, where you're located, what you do, and why people should come see Shady Oaks. Uh, we are very much focused on customer experience uh -huh. and customer education. <clears throat> We're in Cedar Park, Texas. We've got 10 25-yard lanes indoor. We've uh -huh. got six lanes indoor that are 50 yards. Okay. We've got outdoor archery. Right. And uh, and we have private instruction, mm -hmm. group instruction, okay. and then we have uh, instruction, private lessons, group group events, and uh -huh. group lessons. Also. Okay. Well, it sounds like you've been spending a lot since I was down there, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, we've added the 50-yard building, which okay. is uh, six lanes. Okay. Well, hey, good luck on the hunt this afternoon. Appreciate it. All right. I'm Looking sure you got, you got this high-tech stuff, you know, space age, stuff. Let's see if it matters. Oh, I bet you get some. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank it. you. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the hunters. We just talked to Vince. Now we have the other three hunters for this weekend's hunt. So hunters, tell America about yourself, where you're from, and a little bit about your hunting experience. 
Well, my name is Kevin Steele. I'm from Austin, Texas. Um, I work at Texas Parks and Wildlife, and um, as of three days ago, this is would be my first time to pick up a rifle. So um, wow. I'm just excited. Uh, very, very new to all this, but excited about the experience and the opportunity to to come out here and try to hunt. Okay. My name is Barbara Woodworth, and I'm from Austin, Texas. I also work at Texas Parks and Wildlife. Um, I have been deer hunting before, but this is my first time ever to go hog hunting, and hopefully I'll get to shoot something. Hi, my name is Cheyenne. Um, I represent Primary Arms, and I've been a hunter for about two to three years. This is my first time really doing a hog hunt, um, but very excited to be a part of this experience. Now, Cheyenne, with you, we talked a little bit earlier, you like to hunt ducks. Yes. And you are thinking about taking me up on the opportunity to hunt quail in Georgia one day. You bet. All right, so I'm a, I'm a bird hunting shotgunning guy. I like hogs too, but I like those birds. Let's go. So I hope we have good luck on the hunt. I'm gonna be out there filming and I wish y'all all the best. Awesome. Thank you. All right, thank appreciate you. the chance. Right, thank you, yep, yep, all right. Thoroughgood boots are made for real working people. Working people that understand quality isn't simply stated, it's proven. It comes from respecting your heritage, fearlessly pursuing new ideas, and a passion to get the job done right. A dedication to quality and comfort you feel every day when you walk onto the job site. Thoroughgood Boots. Boots for people who still work for a living. Safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different. Help prevent gun accidents, misuse, and theft. Keep firearms safe and secure when not in use. For safe storage options, visit projectchildsafe.org. Have you ever thought about working for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? If so, the southeast region of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is the perfect fit for those that are passionate about nature, science, native plants, and wildlife. Offering positions for IT specialists, wildlife biologists, law enforcement, refuge manager, and maintenance worker, you can enjoy great pay and federal benefits. The Pathways program offers internship opportunities for current students, recent graduates, and those with advanced degrees. With 131 refuges across the southeastern United States, Virgin Island, and Puerto Rico, the region offers unparalleled opportunities for hunting, allowing families the space to pass down our nation's rich hunting heritage. Public land on National Wildlife Refuges are for all to enjoy, and the service welcomes people of all ethnicities, ages, and nationalities. To find employment and intern opportunities, visit usajobs.gov or www.fws.gov. Hi, I'm Monica Williams. Welcome to Santee. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, here I am now with Steve Hall. Steve is a hunter education coordinator for the state of Texas. Steve, tell America about your program and what you do with TPWD. Well, thanks first of all for having me, Eric. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, we do the hunter education program in Texas and there's hunter safety programs all across the country. And we train over 650,000 students every year in the U.S. And in Texas, that's about 10% or maybe about 65,000 every year. Oh man. And we train them in safe, knowledgeable, responsible, and involved hunting and shooting practices. And it's a milestone program in Texas. We've been doing it 50 years. And uh, it's reduced hunting accidents to virtually no accidents for most of the states. In Texas, we might have about, oh, five to 10 accidents a year, but we have 1.2 million hunters hunting year round in Texas. So we're doing a good job. We're still training them, making sure they're even more safe. And then finally, we teach a lot about things like the legal responsibilities and the ethical responsibilities. And between all of that, Hunter Education works. It's a great institute. It's a hallmark program of conservation education throughout the country. Yeah, you know, Steve, I too am a hunter education instructor here for Texas. I'm still on the rolls here. And I used you to You are. Be, I am, I am. <laughs> and I used to be stationed here at Fort Hood, and during that time I did a lot of hunter education classes to get more people out there hunting. And I think that the work that Texas Parks and Wildlife is doing is great because there's a lot of people here in Texas. 
And you said it's all, I think, 1%. What was the statistic again about how many people that, that you certify? Yeah, 65,000 every year right. in Texas alone. But there's millions of people here in Texas, so the market is ripe for more people learning hunter education. So, oh, you bet. Yeah, it's a, it's a great program. And we have a new program called Hunting 101s. Um, beyond hunter education, we try to introduce a, a lot of folks to hunting, either species or by method, maybe bow hunting, mm -hmm. um, species, hog, right. deer, doves. And, and this gets people excited because they're actually going out after a species. Now, of course, we're teaching the safe and the legal, responsible way to do that, but they're really after a species and they're really looking at the biology of the species, how we conserve it, things like mm -hmm. that. So be looking for hunting 101s in Texas as well because those are really valuable learning opportunities. Okay. Well, thanks for your time, Steve. You bet. You bet. Good seeing thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, again. good seeing you. We're going to get out here and try to get some of these hogs shot out here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Remember Amaya from last week's episode when she got seasick down in Texas City? Well, she made a full recovery and she came up to Rockdale to help film this hunt. Vince and George got settled into the blind for their afternoon hunt. And it didn't take long before they had action in the area. They had a huge group of hogs called a sounder come by. Unfortunately, the hogs were on the run and out of range. But after about an hour or so, another group of hogs came in. Would Vince make the shot? Wow, dropped the hog where she stood. You know, that's the second animal I've seen dropped in his tracks by a 6.5 Creedmoor. And on another part of the ranch, Jim, Cheyenne, and myself were inside the blind. Jim spotted a group of hogs come in from the rear. Wow, look at all these hogs. Got her. Wow, are y'all seeing this? Okay, so Cheyenne, you just shot a hog. Yes, sir. What happened? What do you think happened? Tell, 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 tell America what just happened <laughs> on that shot. Or what do you think happened on that shot? Um, so, you know, after a little bit of discussing, it looks like I shot her in the gut, uh, dropped her for a second, and right. then she got back up and ran off. Right. She tried to shoot her again. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go see if we actually got her. Right, right. Jim, she took that, um, that hog, took that 308 like a champ. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> tough, tough animals, but uh, yeah. we'll find her and uh, yeah. hook yeah. her up. Yeah, yeah. Excited. Hopefully she should be dead, so yeah, so that's good. We had a whole bunch of hogs come out. Yep. Uh, Jim was sitting out here, this is a small blind, and there's only really room for two, so Jim was on the back porch out here, <laughs> out here. So uh, he's the one that spotted the hogs, and um, you know, I know you was on them as soon as they came out. I said, oh, just wait, just wait, just let them all yep. come out, because hogs are group animals. They don't just be by themselves for the most part. It was, how many hogs do you think there was? A dozen. Easily a dozen, because there's probably Half a dozen baby well, pigs. We know there's one less. We'll just put it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we, we'll go out here and see if we can find this hog and and um, you know call for our Uber ride to come get us. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. All right. All right. Have you ever thought about working for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? If so, the Southeast region of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is the perfect fit for those that are passionate about nature, science, native plants, and wildlife. Offering positions for IT specialists, wildlife biologists, law enforcement, refuge manager, and maintenance worker, you can enjoy great pay and federal benefits. 
The Pathways program offers internship opportunities for current students, recent graduates, and those with advanced degrees. With 131 refuges across the southeastern United States, Virgin Island, and Puerto Rico, the region offers unparalleled opportunities for hunting, allowing families the space to pass down our nation's rich hunting heritage. Public land on national wildlife refuges are for all to enjoy, and the service welcomes people of all ethnicities, ages, and nationalities. To find employment and intern opportunities, visit usajobs.gov or www.fws.gov. Hi, I'm Monica Williams. Welcome to Santee. Thank you. Safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different. Help prevent gun accidents, misuse, and theft. Keep firearms safe and secure when not in use. For safe storage options, visit projectchildsafe.org. We're going to go out and try to find a blood trail for this hog. Um, you're going to be up for a follow-up shot, um, Cheyenne. So we're going to go out. We're going to try to find blood on the ground. Unfortunately, we believe that's a gut shot. Gut shot animals don't bleed that much, so... It's all right. We're going to see what we can find. It's going to be a great time. We're going to find it. <laughs> <That's> I'm, <laughs> You're I'm find confident. It. I'm confident right. we're going to find her. All right, so let's go find it. All right. As we walked up to where the hog was shot, we did find signs of blood. Yeah, good enough to follow. We also saw stomach content, chewed up grass, indication, solid indication of a gut shot. So ladies and gentlemen, right now, we believe the hog has run up through this opening here. We see a little bit of salt, a little bit of blood, a little bit of um, uh, stomach material. I got my gun just in case I need it. She has her 308 just in case she needs it. So let's go see if we can find this hog. right up here, I see it laying up in the woods right up here. Yeah, so the flies found it before we did, but hey, it's all good. We got a nice, good eating size. This is what I call good eating size. Look like she's either pregnant or nursing. One of the two, but uh, regardless, we're gonna go ahead and take her back, have our Uber ride, then side by side come pick us up, and we're gonna be good to go. Uh, he is going well by the leg here. She's not that heavy. I can pull out, Baba, I can pull out. Don't worry about it, yeah, she ain't that heavy. Good one. And as our Uber ride pulled up, on the other side of the ranch, Emmanuel and Barbara were in the blind preparing for a shot. Barbara had actually seen hogs come by earlier, but they were too far out of range. When Emmanuel was working with her, getting it set up, Shot placement, hoping that another group of hogs would give Barbara an opportunity. Unfortunately, all she saw was deer. A nice buck, by the way. And as darkness set in, Kevin connected on a hog on another part of the ranch. Being that it was his first hunt, all the excitement, I think, got the best of him, and the shot was not as great as we had hoped, and the hog ended up running off. However, we as hunters owe it to the animal to try to find him. And after about an hour long search in the dark, we came up empty handed. But later that night, I gave a class on how to field dress a hog. Emmanuel was assisting Vince with his hog and y'all, this was some good wild pork. 
The next morning, we was up and at him, going out hoping to let Kevin be successful on his first hunt and hoping that Barbara would also see a hog. Dude, you rock. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, was, it, was it broadside when you took the shot? Yes, thank you. Thank you. you want me to carry something? I got it. Yeah, I'll carry it. Okay. All right. Sure. Thanks. All right. All right. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, good luck. There you go. All right. Although it was early, everybody was eager to get back into the blinds, hoping to get some more hogs. But as luck would have it, no one actually saw hogs this morning. We saw cows, we saw deer, but no hogs. After the morning hunt, we did an interview with Jesse Griffiths. My name is Jesse Griffiths, and I'm the head instructor of the New School of Traditional Cookery. I also own a restaurant in Austin called Dai Due and we specialize in game and other local foods at the restaurant and we at the school our new school of traditional cookery we take people hunting we provide some mentorship opportunities and also just take a lot of experienced and new hunters out and show them how to approach game from a culinary angle although nobody saw a hog this morning i think we were all really trying to get back to eat some of jesse's food and it was delicious Serving hunters since 1994, Mafo Johnny Safaris is a hunter's paradise, offering both trophy hunting and management hunts for 32 species of dangerous and plains game. The South African safari caters to both rifle and bow hunters. Mafo Johnny prides itself in offering hunters and guests a true African experience. All-inclusive hunts and sightseeing tours start at just $3,200 U.S. Use promo code NTOTV to save 5% off of your next Mafo Johnny Safari. Thoroughgood boots are made for real working people. Working people that understand quality isn't simply stated, it's proven. It comes from respecting your heritage, fearlessly pursuing new ideas, and a passion to get the job done right. A dedication to quality and comfort you feel every day when you walk onto the job site. Thoroughgood boots, boots for people who still work for a living. Safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different. Help prevent gun accidents, misuse, and theft. Keep firearms safe and secure when not in use. For safe storage options, visit projectchildsafe.org. Kendra Gray. Emmanuel Salas. George Blitch. Mentorship is really critical for the development of a, of a new hunter. Uh, we think about safe, legal, and ethical when we're creating that new hunter. And that last piece of ethics is really critical to the hunting culture because every new hunter is representing all of us and all of hunting. So finding the right mentor, the mentor who knows how to communicate well these values and these principles that uh, we really live our lives by is, is really important. It's something that we're proud to, to be a part of. For new hunters and folks who haven't had the opportunity to do this that often, it's great to pull from that experience from those, from those hunters who've been around for a while that's been you know, out in the woods and, and doing these kind of things to help keep you safe. Uh, Steve introduced me to archery many years ago, and he's still, he's still today one of my mentors. So thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome, sir. Kevin, before we close, I just got a question. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on something because you made a lot of comments while in the blind this morning about uh, first time you ever seen a sunset rise in the woods. You're from the city. Where are you from? Austin, Texas. Um, and yeah, you're 100% you're correct. Um, this is... The last few days have been the first time that I've picked up a rifle and when we talk about sunrises and sunset, hey, I'm used to the city background. I'm listening, I'm, I'm listening to the lights go off or the lights come on right. in the city. Uh, but this morning was, was, was very inspirational. I, I, I started off in the dark, in a blind, and kind of watched the sunrise and watched the world lighten up and, and the birds are chirping and you know the little deer are running around. So it was, it was different, but it was good. It was, it was different and, and, and very, very eye-opening. Well, Jim, we are at the end of a great event. I think it went pretty good. How about you? 
It went better than expected, Eric. I mean, you know, the goals of this event were to bring in new people, first time mm -hmm. hunters, bring in industry folks, bring in agency right. folks, bring in mentors, and we had it all. Okay. Texas Park and Wildlife brought two new hunters and, and bought a bunch of staff that helped support the event. Mm -hmm. uh, Primary Arms brought a new hunter, Shady Oaks Gun Range had right. a new hunter. So we got the industry and agency together on recruitment and diversity recruitment. So Grand Slam, and yeah. then on top of a Grand Slam, you bring in Jesse to cook oh, us a yeah. meal of the wild hog. And whew, yeah, I yeah. tell you, it was I good. am they were thrilled with the event. And oh, yeah. kudos to you and your team for capturing everything. Well, and appreciate it. We look forward to the next one. Oh yeah, we do, we do. One thing I, 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 I noted is that a lot of the hunters had a good time. Yeah, you know, we had two hunters that, uh, well, one hunter, Barbara, didn't get a shot at anything. She saw hogs on the first day, about 200 yards. She didn't get a shot, but she was okay with it. Right. Uh, then we had Kevin, who actually made a shot on the hog. He shot it. We tracked it. We did due diligence. And he asked, you know, hey, you know, how often should we, how long should we look for a hog? I said, you look for an animal until you are confident that you right. cannot find it. And that's what we did. He was okay with it, said he learned a lot. And so I think, you know, we met our objectives all the way around. Yeah, we so, had two of the four hunters shot and retrieved a beautiful boar, and, or well, beautiful hog, right. and uh, the others learned a lot, and such great attitudes, and the all-important words, come with. Right. If you ask somebody to come with you, you're going to get a yes, and it feels better to teach somebody than to do it for the hundredth time, so there you go. ask somebody to come with you. All right. Thank you all for watching this episode of Non-Tip Like Dozen TV.